Now that you know the different types of data, let's go through how to store it. The code I'll be using is available on the workshop page if you want to follow along with me. To store data, we use variables. And to create a variable, we need a type and a name. So for instance here, I've got the type of int and the name a. And what this does is it reserves a space in memory to store what we want. For b, I've done the same thing, the type of int and the name of b, but I've also set its first value to be zero. This is a good idea because if you don't set the value, it will use whatever binary data happened to be left in that space at the time and convert it as its value. So you'll see here that the default value of a is just over 4 million. If you want to change an existing variable, we don't need to use the type again, we just use its name. So for instance, b equals 2. For c, I used a constant value that I created at the top using hash define, the constant name and the value. The constant name is generally all caps and anything from the end of the name to the end of the line becomes the value. You'll notice that I didn't use a semicolon because this would become part of the value and would break our code. For D, I'm simply putting a decimal value in a double type, whereas in E, I'm using scientific notation, which can be very handy if you have very large or very small numbers. For F, we're putting a negative number into a signed variable, and with G, we're putting the same negative value into an unsigned variable. This has the effect of going below its minimum value and rolling back round and starting at its maximum value and working backwards. As you can see over here, it's gone to 65,000. For H, I'm showing you how to use hexadecimal notation, which is a zero, an X, and then the value in base 16. For I, on the other hand, I'm using octal notation or base eight, and that is simply just a zero at the beginning of your number. Now floating point types behave slightly differently to integer types where if you exceed the minimum or maximum value of an integer, it wraps around to the other end. In a floating point type, you actually get an error of negative or positive infinity, as you can see here with j. And finally, if you would like to use the return value of a function, like I have here with the square root function from the math library, all you need to do is use that function in place of the value you would normally put in a variable. Like I said, this code is available on the workshop page, so if you follow along and have any questions, feel free to put them on the forum and I'll answer them for you.